In physics and other sciences, equations are an important tool. Just like you'd use a hammer and nails for building a house or drip and pulse meter and blood pressure meter when you're a nurse or whatever, the equations are an important tool. So we have to know how to rearrange equations. And there's three important rules when rearranging equations. So the first one is the order of it. The order of rearranging is important. And the order, we can actually determine the order by bed mass. Now, if you're American, you've probably seen bod mass instead. So bed mass, bod mass, same thing. So if we're solving equations, We're putting numbers in, we start at the end for B, brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So if we're sol solving, we start at this end. If we're rearranging though, we start at the other end. So when we're rearranging equations, the first thing we're going to do First operations we're going to look at are subtraction, then addition, then multiplication, then division, then exponents, powers. This is also where functions go. I mean, the reason why we use E here is because F for function gives us a bit mass. Yeah. So, and then the last thing we do is we crack open the brackets and look inside. So order of rearranging again is subtraction, addition, multiplication, division, Components, brackets. Okay, so that's rule number one. The order is important, and that's how we determine the order. Rule number two, every function has an opposite function. So what I mean by this is that for addition, the opposite function to addition is subtraction. For multiplication, the opposite function to multiplication is division. For square, the opposite function would be square root. And for things like trig functions, sine, we have the inverse sine function, which is usually shift sine on your calculator. So every function that we're going to use, there's going to be an inverse function. Now rule number three, this is really important. What we do to one side of the equation, do to the whole of the other side of the equation. So let's just give this example. So let's just try a trivial case, something just to practice it and get the minds around us. If I say 1 equals 1, hopefully that's obviously true. Now if I multiply this side by 2, and I do the same thing to the other side, multiply by 2, now we've got 2 equals 2. And if I was to add 4 to both sides, it would now be 6 equals 6. If I divide both sides by 3, then I end up with 2 equals 2. So what this is trying to show, what I'm trying to show here is if we do this to this whole side as well, then mathematically it's going to stay true or stay correct. So what we do to one side, we must do to the whole of the other side. So those are the three rules of rearranging equations. We determine the order that we rearrange or shift operates across using bed mass or bob mass, depending on which category you're from. We know that every function has an opposite function, so that's it. And what we do to one side. So let's actually try this on an example. Let's just give it. So I'm 
I have an equation like BF equals BI plus AT. Okay, notice this little subscript, this F is below the line and smaller. That says this is saying this is a different type of velocity than that. But let's say we have an equation like that. VF equals VI plus AT. Now I'm going to rearrange for A. So, at this point, don't get hung up over what the letters mean. They're just blobs. And that's really important. They're just blobs. So I want to find rearrange for that. So, the first rule was use Bed maps. So I look at this and I go, is there anything subtracted from A? And I can see that there's no minus signs anywhere in there. So, so what we have is we have a blob here with A in it, and a blob without A, so there's nothing subtracted from that blob. I then look and see, there's any addition, is there anything added to the blob that has got A in it? The answer is yes, because that's plus it's VI plus AT. So then use the opposite. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that from that lot. So I go minus VI. But remember, rule 3 said that what we do to one side, we must also do the other. So if I subtract VI from this side, we must also subtract it from the whole of that side. So this now becomes VF minus VI equals, and if I have VI minus VI, that equals 0. I'm just leaving with this bit here. Then we go back to our bed mass. Again, as we're solving, we start from that side. We say, is there anything else subtracted from that block? And the answer is no. Is there anything adding to that block? And the answer is no. Is there anything multiplying the A? And in this case, we can say, yes, there is a T multiplying that A. So we know that the opposite of multiplication is division. So where it says times, I now go divide. And what I do to one side, I must do to the whole of the other side. So I must put a line here, a T there. Because that line, C, is divided by. So now, T divided by T, anything divided by itself equals 1. So we get rid of that. So A, B, F, minus B, I, over T, equals A. And I just shift the A onto the side. So that's the process that we use. There, there shall be some worked examples shortly. But Rearrange using bed mass and blood mass. You already know how to do that, or you should know that from high school. If you don't, brush up on it. Then we use the opposite functions. So we're trying to get rid of everything, in this case, the not A. So we're going to subtract or divide to get rid of everything that's not A. And then, when we're doing that, then we must do it to the whole of the other side. So those are the three rules. Three rules that are determine the order, use the opposites, and do that to everything, to both sides.